Today on The Breakfast, Nigerian Communications Commission begins harmonization of short codes across all networks. We'll look at what this means and its implications for the Nigerian people. And also on The Breakfast, Zainek Zainek postponed the governorship and state assembly polls to reconfigure the beavers. Appeal court rules on INEC's request to vary order permitting political parties to inspect poll materials. And don't forget, we'll go through today's national dailies to analyze the biggest stories of the day in Off the Press. All right, it's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, brand new day, of Thursday, the 9th of March, 2023. Um, Nigerians were meant to be preparing for elections on Saturday, but I guess you know what has happened. You're welcome to The Breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartel. And I am Messi Ibopo. It's good to be back on your screen. Yeah, Messi, we have to find you for being away yesterday. What did you bring for us? Oh, well... You brought I mean, Beavers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, oh, FCT, the but, FCT is, you know, different from what it is. Negotiations are taking it very chill. Mm, it's, it's, mm. So you would really assume that, you know, Abuja is different from yeah, Lagos, you, right? you, you, So you think that Abuja should be peaceful, but, you know, that's not the case. Didn't you feel like um, you're really, really going very, through a daily struggle because of traffic? <laughs> you know, with no, Abuja, Abuja is a bit quiet and you, you just, you know, peaceful and... But even at that, and, you, know, you know, you find that... Uh, a lot of people are pretty upset. Uh, things are not going very well. People are very frustrated. And you can feel the frustration at every point in time. In Abuja? Yes. Mm -hmm. No no wonder the opposition, uh, Labour Party, had the highest votes in that city. I was um, listening to the radio on my way to work this morning, and uh, someone sent a message to one of the stations, uh, which I monitored, um, saying that uh, the fuel guest is biting hardest in FCT. And that's very correct. This is the center of government. This is the seat of government. And that is where you have the most, the impact of incompetence of government the most. It's, you know, or let me say failure of, of government agencies, you know, the most. I mean, I remember a video someone filmed, the user generated video, you know, a social media user filmed of um, black market uh, petrol sellers with their jerry cans selling just opposite NNBC towers last year. That was just um, an irony, a paradox of sorts. All right, um, we'll start a look at um, the top trending stories of the day with um, what happened at the Ajegunle Akere motor spare parts market in Ola, Olodia Papa or Ajegunle Papa, Lagos. Um, you can see uh, the fire service operatives or officials doing a yeoman's job trying to put out the fire. But um, I think it was too little too late because uh, the fire we started at about 3 a.m. had done a lot of damage and one life had already uh, been lost. Um, the police in Lagos State through the CP says that they are, have started an investigation into suspected arson at this fire incident at Akere Motor Spare Parts Market, Tolu Olodia Papa, uh, Lagos. Um, that is what they're saying. They started that investigation yesterday morning. Uh, the CP, we told, you know, had ordered that investigation. It came in a statement um, through the spokesman of the police or the public police public relations officer in Lagos State, Benjamin Hundei, who said that though the fire was put out around 3 a.m., a uh, 65-year-old security guard lost his life in the incident. This was already public information, but police had to officially confirm this fire incident. It's a spare parts market in the Ajegunle uh, Apapa axis of Lagos State. And um, we saw the videos on social media, a lot of um, um, spare parts burned beyond recognition. And, um, you know, uh, uh, traders in those who have shops and have materials they sell there, lamenting loss of their products and items worth billions. Um, the traders at the market, you know, said they lost uh, um, goods worth millions of naira, rather, and that uh, some group of gunmen came there at about 2.30 a.m. Uh, and set the market ablaze. They, the gunshots were fired, 
And um, a security guard, 65-year-old security guard, uh, lost his life to gunshot injuries, okay? Uh, the Lagos State Fire and Rescue Service issued a statement before the police statement. This was earlier on Wednesday, and they said the deceased male adult uh, had a gunshot injury, and of course this now therefore fueled the speculation that this was a deliberate attack. The police have also given a hint that this may have been a deliberate attack by saying they're investigating arson. Um, so that's that, that's that. But they're asking for information, they're calling on the public to exercise restraint while the police conducts its investigation. Uh, and Kofi, you know, with the issue of fire, for every other time we talk about fire incidents in Lagos, whether in Lagos or outside of Lagos, uh, the conversation seems to be the same. The thoughts will never change as to uh, we being very proactive, ensuring that we avoid it. Now, and in most cases, there are issues of arson where you have someone who's responsible for all of that. But uh, is it not possible to have a system where we can actually ensure that you know, those who are involved in all of this are, are being prosecuted, they are arrested. We have to know because these things, the fire doesn't happen by itself. If someone put the fire there, then we, we can't say that, you know, and the entire period passes on and then we just move on like nothing happened. And then those who should do the needful are not able to do that. The police should be able to apprehend those who are behind all of this. So that's one of it. But on the other hand, we say that if fire, you know, fire would happen, such as an accident. Is it not also not important that we educate ourselves? I mean, we do the need for. The fire service does not just exist to take out the fire or fight fire, as it would be said in other climbs, firefighters. Cats. <laughs> Rescue cats, let me say. Okay. Rescue cats from trees, stranded cats, and, and all, all of that. that. Uh, it, it goes beyond that. Mm. It's also expected that there's the part of education, educating the people, informing them, behaviors and action and practices that we, we can take, that people can practice, people in these marketplaces, uh, what people need to know, and also having a, a fire station in the market. Nothing stops that. I mean, it's a very sensitive market, a market where you sell spare parts. That's a lot for a country that is not big on, you know, the production of our vehicles. I mean, if you're talking about uh, spare parts of automobile, that's a lot. So uh, one would think that we'll be very proactive. Why don't we have the relevant security or have the necessary? So let's even say uh, it's an arson and we're not able to apprehend or arrest whoever is behind it. But can't we even have a fire station in this market closest to it so we can quell the fire at the shortest uh, you know, notice or whenever it happens? That's on the one hand. But also, the issue of security, and I feel like this continues every other time because uh, people have not been punished. We feel to act helpless. We don't know. We don't want to investigate. It, it reminds me of a time where, you know, robbers attacked my house. And then I, I thought that when the police came to the rob, uh, robbery scene, they were going to, uh, they were going to, were going to be having uh, tapes, mark the whole place. You know, just like barricades, they'll come and inspect the whole building. I just think I saw a lot of movies and um, just uh, too of ambitious right there. But that wasn't the case. The police will say, okay, this, now yeah, it happened. Yeah, okay, okay. They don't go, Abby. Yes, okay, that was it. That's the end. So I'm saying well, we, we can't continue like this and expect a different result. I think we can do better. And that's it. Mm, so, so um, yeah, you, you've said it, you know, we always will ask what the... Um, uh what the the i mean how the fires could have been prevented especially if you have some sort of um uh, fire station nearby uh um you know uh should we have fire stations in the market should we not have fire stations in the market uh you know etc etc you know it's very very important to have some sort of um you know uh, uh uh, something nearby to help. Um, but I think it's it's not too bad because there's a fire service uh, station in La Papa, you know, and it, it's it's 14 minutes drive, uh, at least in high traffic, from that fire station to where the fire incident is, is happening. Um, in, 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 case, in this case, the fire happened at about 3 a.m. So it may take them without... Um, uh, traffic, traffic tra yeah, maybe about uh, maybe ten minutes, you know, maybe or less. Or less than ten minutes to respond. You know, sometimes that time is not, enough, but it's it's close by. So so if you have a fire station in the vicinity, 
that can service not just the market but everything around, then I think it's good. But the thing about these markets is the way they are built as well. You know, um, they are built in clusters. I've never been to this Akere market before, but they're built in clusters. And you have, like, imagine Balogo Market, Mercy. There's a fire inside. You have to break some shops to get there. You know, Mercy, I went to Balogo Market to do some shopping some time ago. Someone took me around. I was looking for particular items. And when we were supposed to leave, we came out at a part of the market that was going to help us come out at that Akmombo area, okay, to access Carter Bridge or something like that. And we passed underneath the market. Those shops that were burned that affected the Akmombo Bridge the integrity, the Echo Bridge. And you see the cluster of shops under the bridge. They're built, it's, it's, it's a town, you know. But, you know, you would always blame, and I know it's not the time we don't like to embark on blame games, but we need to look at where, where this is coming from. You always look at authorities who allow these uh, traders to build their markets in clusters because the more they are, the more money their boys can make and send to them. You know, we need to build proper markets, build proper markets. And then when you build proper markets, you provide water for Lagosians. I don't know whether the current governor in his campaigns has said, has promised water, you know. But I think they those who want to remove him as, as saying, well, in 24 years or so, these guys haven't given you water. We'll give you water, you know. So if we have water in Lagos, Mercy, if we have water in Lagos, this is a, supposed to be a mega city, it's supposed to be a center of excellence, you know. If we have water in Lagos, you can have water hydrants at these markets when they are properly built, okay? Have water hydrants at these markets, and before the fire service comes, they can break it and use the water to see what they can do, you know. The secondly, I know under Fashola, Lagos State used to have a very strong safety culture. When Fashola was governor, you know, you go to office, they will find you. If they come to office for inspection and your, your HSE things are not... Um, there. And I remember I wasn't in Lagos. I wasn't in Lagos. Because of how it was, I knew. Because each time I come to Lagos, I see how frantically the offices, the corporate organizations are trying to make sure they, they put the signs there. Like now, you come to this our bill office, you know, you see how we have a lot of signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you're climbing the staircase to tell you hold the rails. You see the signs. You know, watch your head and watch your step. Uh, turn exit, left. Turn left. We have all these things here, everywhere in this building. You know, it's just like when you go to an oil company. You know, you see a lot of these HSC things around. They spend money on it. You know, they pay their, their just that department their staff a lot of money. So, so is, is the current administration, Lagos State, is it big on health and safety and environment? You know, are they keeping up to those standards? So that um, you make sure that if all the markets, the shops, they have the extinguisher. It's not about going to sell local government basket. I don't want really to do that in Lagos. <laughs> but, but that was a big thing. It's a big thing. It's not about going to sell local government baskets. Uh, this um, refuse dump. They won the bottle last year. Mm. Then it's still there. We'll bring another one. See, you must buy. Mm. No. Okay? You have to have to have fire extinguisher. And look at the safety. That's number one. Number two, this issue of arson is so sad that the 65-year-old security man Died. If you listen to one of the interviews uh, that the a, a trader there granted, he said, now, nah, our old papa, where they play with us. So they know him in the area. Mm. And he was shot needlessly. 65-year-old and you're a security guard? That means that you're really you're hustling to provide for your family. And I, I won't be surprised if this 65-year-old man, security guard who was killed, is, is, is a breadwinner of his family. So that's the life that has been taken away. And, of course, the support given to his family is gone. You know? Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's really sad. Now, who are the people who went to burn that market? Because now it's not as if we have to say allegedly uh, there was a... Hey, we're not going to do it allegedly here. Because we know that someone died from guns. Oh, allegedly guns were fired. We don't know. Is it true? Police were... This one, we know that some, some boys or some gunmen went there, unknown gunmen, okay, went there, and they fired shots. Why did they fire the shots? Of course, they know they're leaving us a fire. So something must have happened. So mm. I know that there are speculations that, oh, because this is election period, the governorship elections, is, uh, elections are just a few days away, or were a few days away at the time. Uh, maybe supporters of the ruling party in Lagos State are trying to intimidate the Igbo speaking community because most of those who trade in this market are from the Southeast. But I will urge caution. Let the police conduct their investigation. Let's not uh, rush conclusions. However, in the recent days, Mercy, tribal sentiments have been whipped up by those who, who, um, who are merchants of, of, of division, all right? Merchants of division because they profit from divide and rule tactics. And so they whipped up these tribal sentiments in a bid 
to see how they can get votes their way. And it's not right. Mm -hmm. And this has led to, it's heightened the speculation that there is a um, sort of a, a tribal um, uh, aspect to this arson. But we can't tell. It's always important to wait for the police to conduct his investigation. Like I said, in the case of um, the Christian Gale, we have to wait for the police to conduct their investigation, and then we can take it from there. So our hearts go out to the, the traders who lost their goods, very sad, and also to the family of the 65-year-old security man, the papa, who lost his life. Our hearts go out to his family. It's very sad. Mm. I mean, uh, apart from the fact that you have raised uh, the issue of uh, whether or not this is, it has any political sentiment and it's advice that the police would do the need for, uh, relevant authorities, but there are also some other issues that we need to pay attention to, like you have mentioned, uh, the administration of this market, and, the, and that's why uh, local government need to be, our local government need to be up and running and very effective. Uh, the autonomy of local government should not be debated. Uh, if you look at the, the laws and the constitution and in terms of responsibility, the state government has no business in market administration and what happens around and some of these things. It should be within the purview of the local government as a third tier of government. And that's what it should be. And, and we hope that in 2023, as we're going to have new government, that this government will pay attention to ensuring that we have um, the third tier of government running you know, in full scale, we're talking about financial autonomy, so they can, you know, take responsibility and act and do things that they ought to do, because this is also within the purview of the states to take. But just quickly, uh, for the want of time, we look at another one. It breaks my heart to bring this to you, that two Nigerians arrested at an Indian airport with cocaine capsule concealed in their, you know, stomach. Uh, according to this report, these two Nigerian nationals were arrested for concealing 167 capsules of cocaine uh, at the Mumbai airport in India. Now, how did they find out? To, you know, there were several reports to the Indian TV uh, where the officials from the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence said that these passengers were arrested by police after they arrived. Uh, at the international airport from Le via Lagos in Addis Ababa, and that was on Friday. Uh, it was stated that the DRI officials took them to court and demanded that they were examined by a doctor because they may have hidden drugs in their bodies. Now, after a medical examination, uh, you know, which confirmed that two Nigerians were hiding cocaine in the stomachs, uh, they were purged, or they had to get them to get it out. Uh, you know how these things work. And then... Uh, they took out 167 capsules over three days. Uh, so uh, this, this capsule, according to the DRI official, this capsule contained a total of 2.97 uh, kilogram of cocaine worth of RS 29.76. Uh, mm. <laughs> you sound, you sound uh, so, so, I mean, if it yeah. were me, I would not even know what this is about. Uh, what, what is what, that? Why are you sounding like you're not sounding like I, 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 I know where, where, where you live, near where you live. Some, some, so, some, there was so, a bus. So, so, so because you know, <laughs> the, that, that, that record bus they had, um, um, uh, Marwa, it's, Co it's your Co estate Co now. Did you know that that particular day where that arrest was made, on my way to, yes, on my way back to the house from the office, I saw the NDLE. You don't need to see the NDLE when they are in operation. Really? It's very scary. You need, they were in full force. Mm. And so, you know, at the time I was like, what's going on here? I hope you are listening. Don't do drugs. Yes. So, um, it, it felt like I was going to put up a story. You know, my sister's like, okay, this, but I now thought that he could give this, this person a hint. You never know who was there. So, say, okay, let's escape. So, I just had to let it slide. Mm. So, so that they embarrassed mm. But really, funnily, wow. just two houses or three houses wow. away from mine. Okay, okay. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with how you are you're comfortably I'm analyzing this. Really I'm okay, okay, okay. I'm a journalist. Okay. I'm expected mm. to know. No, 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 I'm saying you could have, maybe you could have embarked on investigative journalism to that house. No, no. You know, to no, say, you know, no, investigative are, journalism. The house, the house is sealed. Don't worry. Okay, <laughs> you no can't worries. even go there. Well, um, so, Kofi, that's it. And... Um, the reaction from a lot of Nigerians is that all of this... Now, let's get it clear. We're not holding brief. I am not holding brief <laughs> for uh, those who are involved in peddling drugs and what have you. As long as it's a crime, it's a crime. But uh, we, we don't have to say that Nigerians are the only one on this table. There are smugglers everywhere. And so, yes, I understand how uh, we probably feel it's not holding brief for them. But smuggling and smugglers are almost everywhere. 
and Nigeria is also not left out. Manda, one of the things or one of the reactions that a lot of persons have shared or the concern is that all of these actions have consequences on Nigerians outside of Nigeria. And there's also Nigeria, I mean, Nigerians in diaspora, that's what we're saying. So for every other time there's a bad behavior, you know, from the very populous country um, in West Africa, and a black nation for that matter, then you have too many, you know, issues. You, ne you would never know. Well, you know, in relations with other countries, when people, you know, get to go for business, what it is, whatever it is you want to look at, they're not being, you know, treated normally like every other person. So there's like an extra. And sometimes they are discriminated. So you need to understand that your action for every time you embark on this, whatever it is that you do, uh, tells on the, the integrity, tells also, it reflects on our country as a people. And I think that you should think about your actions. So it's not just you. You're not doing it for you. You're also doing whatever it is that you're doing. And it has a serious implication on us and on an every other Nigerian, wherever it is that they find themselves. So, yes, it's, it's just, uh, you know, I really don't know what the excuse would be. Uh, there might just be different reasons, Kofi, for, the, for all of that. All right, let's move to the next uh, top trending story. Um, we have uh, Lagos uh, releasing impounded vehicles uh, to owners free of charge and of course this by way of information you know uh, vehicles that were impounded by uh, the Lagos State Government through the Lagos State uh, Traffic Management Agency um, uh, these are vehicles that were impounded due to infractions uh, and disobedience of uh, traffic laws and traffic rules and you can see on your screen uh, some of the last mile officials, that's what they're called, Lagos State Traffic Management Agency. Uh, so you have vehicles impounded um, uh, over uh, the infringement uh, uh, of uh, uh, traffic laws or traffic infractions, you want to call it that. And um, we are aware that some months ago, um, the government of Lagos State auctioned um, some of these vehicles, even uh, despite the plea of some, some of the owners who uh, we're begging the government to release the cars to them. Most of them are commercial vehicles, and they said that their livelihoods were affected. Um, the Lagos State Governor is also the uh, uh, the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress. Uh, so, you know, this is also, some would say, part of that. But the government has begun the release of those impounded vehicles to their owners uh, free of charge. The reason the government is given is uh, uh, the cash crunch that has hit the nation following the Central Bank of Nigeria redesign policy. Uh, the release of the vehicles to their owners, we're told, began since last Saturday, and is still ongoing. Um, the Lagos State Commissioner for Transport is a very busy man these days. Um, and I'll tell you why in my analysis. He's um, Dr. Frederick Oladende. Uh, he said the governor of Lagos State had ensured the vehicles impounded for minor traffic offenses were returned to their owners with the fines waived. They didn't have to pay any fine. That's uh, that on that trading story. Messi. Well, Kofi, uh, you, I'm sure that you're also very in the know of the kind of conversation or the thoughts that uh, we have right there on social media and different parts, uh, whether on air or off air or, you know, off social media, is that uh, a lot of Nigerians or Lagosians, if you like to say, are querying the intention. Now, for every other time there's an action, there's always, uh, people get to look at what's the intention behind all of this. So uh, the intention of the Lagos State Government has been criticized. And some people think that just how many days before the elections? The elections uh, should have actually happened on the 11th this weekend. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, INEC has stated it's been moved to the 18th of March. And so uh, people are already taking that with a pinch of salt. So why now? But even though you also see that uh, the government has given a reason to say catch crunch, uh, but people are saying, oh, really? There's a lot that the government has done. Uh, pensioners have been paid. I mean, if you also look at it, there seem to be constant power supply in different parts of it. And some people are saying, this, could this really be uh, a, a, a way of... Uh, you know, gaining the people's vote or asking the people uh, to vote for them. It's just, is this a way where the government is trying to reach out, you know, to gain votes for the uh, elections that were slated for the 11th of March? Uh, there are too many, uh, you know, activities, but it brings us to the conversation of uh, government and governors and the, you know, provision of basic amenities. Now, and I think it's, it's in this climb where we live that for every other time you have a government embarking on uh, road construction, the basic things, there are just some things that are just natural 
it comes as a child and uh, as a mother. So you say you have a family and uh, in the family you have a child. There are some things that are just basic, is natural. And that's by virtue of being that you are a child. That's by virtue of being that, you know, he's my father, then this is my mother. There are some duties that, uh, that come to you naturally, you know, ensuring that you're taking care of uh, food, shelter, clothing, and what have you, up until you, you, you come of age. So it's the same thing. But over time, the people have been made to feel that uh, it seemed like it's a favor. So when government embarks on road construction, and then they begin to loud it or put it out there, and then there's a lot of appraisal, oh, this is so much. It begins to look like government has done something extraordinary. It is what government should do. Government responsibility, and that's why government exists, to ensure that lives, properties are protected, and ensure that the people you know, have what it takes to live life. I mean, you are uh, taking at a, and, and taking the shorts. You're also calling the shorts on their behalf, managing resources. That's what it is. So it's not different. And I understand where the people are coming from. So it's on this premise. The people are saying, oh, so why didn't this happen all the time? Uh, don't forget also, just like Kofi had mentioned, once upon a time, uh, 140 of these vehicles were auctioned in September 2022. And the economy hasn't really fared well. I mean, we're still trying to recover from COVID. So yes, there's cash crunch. There's a lot of hardship and difficulty. But you know, it's not uh, uh, it's not different from what Nigerians have been going through. I think that's the reason why people are taking that with a pinch of salt. But yeah. you know, you, yeah. you might also want to say yes, yeah. commendable of the legacy. Yeah, Mister, we don't have too much time, so I just quickly give my analysis. But it's um, um, I mean, you've talked about last minute. Um, uh, you've talked about the fact that these people are saying, or some are, you know, saying that, hey, why are you releasing these vehicles at uh, some days to the elections? And some feel this is um, a, a, a ploy or a measure move by the Lagos State Government releasing these impound vehicles for uh, minor traffic offenses without payment of fines, just to, you know, end some public sympathy and we'll probably end some votes um, as the election approaches. Um, so this is not the only thing. We've seen the governor of Lagos State uh, give interviews to media organizations, and uh, he's already been accessible uh, for some time. In fact, he didn't participate in any of the governorship debates that held you know, in the weeks leading up to the governorship election, which has just been uh, rescheduled. And some people asked, OK, I mean, the governor not going for the uh, debates, the governorship debates. Is he running for a second term or not? You know, because if you're running for a second term, you, you're still in the election, you want to be out there. And uh, some people were surprised when he went out to give some interviews to uh, private radio sta uh, you know, stations, rather, you know, media houses, not aligned with the All Progressives Congress. Um, apart from that, you know, the, the governor of Lagos State, the reason I said the Commissioner for Transport has his work cut out, is because um, he's also, they've also approved a 50% slash in the transportation fares of Lagos State government-owned uh, or backed uh, transportation um, uh, services. So you have lag bus, lag ride, I think your BRT lag services, lag ferry and all that, 50% discount, you know, and it's so wonderful. But you see that in some of these apps, uh, you have the government, like in lag ride app, you have, lag ride app, you have the governor's, the government, governor's um, campaign message there. You know, some people are say, okay, why is this coming now? Is it because of elections? Um, you can talk about the Ilera Echo that was recently launched. That is a, a, a health program by the Lagos State Government. And recently, we're told they are feeding 5,000 pregnant women. Some are saying this is so close to the election. Why now? Another one you can talk about is Lagos State Government paying 533 pensioners, 1.2 billion naira. This is just a, uh, about a week ago. People are asking, why now? But of course, it's not unexpected that the politicians should do some of these things, you know, to um, closer to the election. But what people are saying out there is that we need to see you doing these things before the election. If you're going to the markets, the governor was in um, uh, um, uh, was, uh, um, this, this market where he sell computers you know, in Lagos, Alaba market, sorry. He was in Alaba market some days ago and interacting with the traders. I we've not seen you for four years. Where have you been? He was in some shopping mall interacting with traders as well. And people say, we've not seen you. And there's a girl who took him up, you know, and was debating. Uh, yeah. He's say, okay, <laughs> for not attending the governorship debates, it serves you right, you know? So we need to see politicians yeah, do better. Do these things. Don't wait till the election before you do some of these things. And so people are saying, you can't fool us. We're made up our mind to vote who we want to vote. If you're coming out now to give interviews about answers and explain things, you should have done it a long time ago. 
you won't fool us. We are going to vote for who we want to vote for. I think Nigerians are wiser now. We're not saying don't vote for Governor Samuelu or vote for any other person. No. But we're just giving you a feel of what people are saying out there because this is top trending segment. We have to go. We'll take a break. And when we come back, uh, we'll look at what the papers say. Stay with us. <laughs>